right now, there's a new candidate in the race for Wisconsin governor. How it's shaking up the Republican Party. Also, multiple people are in custody in connection with the homicides of six people in Milwaukee. What police are saying, what they know. This is News 3 Now at noon. Good afternoon, I'm Mark Kane. Wisconsin Republicans will now have to make a choice for who they want to run against Democratic Governor Tony Evers this year. Today, Kevin Nicholson announced that he will be running against former Lieutenant Governor Rebecca Clayfish. Nicholson is running as an anti-establishment outsider in a bid to capture conservatives who have not gotten behind Clayfish's candidacy. He's... <clears throat> Excuse me, he's already clashed with Republicans, including both Clayfish and Assembly Speaker Robin Voss, who last week urged Nicholson not to run. President Biden says he'll name the first black woman to the U.S. Supreme Court. He made the comment while announcing the retirement of Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer. Now speculation is growing over who the president will nominate to fill the spot. Natalie Brand reports from the White House. Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer plans to step down while Democrats control Congress, giving President Biden his first opportunity to fill a vacant seat. Thank you very much, Mr. President. President Clinton nominated the longtime liberal justice back in 1994. His retirement will not change the ideological makeup of the court, now split with six Republican-appointed justices and three selected by Democratic presidents. The retirement comes just ahead of midterm elections that could change change the balance in the Senate. And President Biden is expected to fulfill a campaign promise to make an historic choice. I'm looking forward to making sure there's a black woman on the Supreme Court. The front runner on the list of potential candidates is 51-year-old federal appeals court judge Katanji Brown Jackson, who clerked for Justice Breyer. Without a doubt, being a law clerk for Justice Breyer was one of the most rewarding professional experiences of my life. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says he wants to move quickly on confirming a nominee. He's expected to follow a similar timeline that Republicans used to confirm Justice Amy Coney Barrett in just over a month. It now takes just a simple majority to confirm a Supreme Court nominee after Republican lawmakers changed the Senate rules in 2017. With a 50-50 split in the Senate, if Democrats stick together, Vice President Kamala Harris would be able to break the tie. Natalie Brandt, CBS News, the White House. Well, the Packers will be undergoing a lot of changes during the offseason, and that now includes finding a new offensive coordinator. The Associated Press is reporting that the Denver Broncos are finalizing a deal to hire Nathaniel Hackett as their new head coach. Hackett helped the Packers and Matt LaFleur win 39 games in three seasons. His hiring also brings speculation about the Broncos trying to lure quarterback Aaron Rodgers to Denver as well. The Broncos have had 10 starting quarterbacks and no playoff appearances since Peyton Manning's retirement six years ago. Let's head to the Weather Center now. Meteorologist Dana Fulton joining us at noon for the certified most accurate forecast. Welcome to you. Yes, changing things up just a little bit. Uh, it is a lot more comfortable outside today compared to where we were at over the last few days. Sunshine coming through and temperatures in the low 30s. We do have a bit of a breeze coming through some wind chills right now in the mid 20s, but it is 31 in Monroe, 34 in Mineral Point and 36 in Bosco Bell right now. So very comfortable. A 30 degree jump for us in Madison over the last 24 hours, about a 31 degree jump for the Dells. Overall, the wind chill improving greatly throughout uh, southern Wisconsin, but uh, as usual, we look to the northwest to see what will likely be building in for tomorrow, and you can already see that colder air drifting into central Minnesota. That's what we are expecting overnight and heading into Friday. Today, our high temperatures, again, landing in the low 30s. We're expecting temperatures overnight to drop well below zero for us, though. Yet again, Mark, bundle up for early Friday. It's going to get cold again outside. So one day. Just one day. One brief <laughs> little, little jump up for us. <laughs> All right, well, learn to live with it, Dana. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Beloit police say a man is now in custody in connection with the death investigation on the city's west side. Yesterday, authorities responded to a report of a gunshot victim in the 1400 block of Madison Road. There they found a 31-year-old woman who was shot. She later died at the hospital. Right now, police are trying to determine a motive. Uh, we don't know the motive. Uh, we know the domestic situation. Uh, we're still trying to work through that uh, with our detective bureau to uh, find out the motive in regards to this. Police say the suspect has prior minor offenses, but they can't release any other information at this time. 
Four people of interest are in custody in connection to the homicide of six people found dead inside a Milwaukee home. The incident happened on January 23rd. Today at a news conference, Milwaukee Police Department Chief Jeffrey Norman said the shootings were not a random act. Police believe multiple guns were used. Five men and one woman were found dead inside the house. Chief Norman is asking the public to come forward with information related to the investigation. We are still working on the uh, uh, motive. This is still an ongoing investigation. Um, I never want to say anything with certainty, but what is being revealed, it does not look like it is a murder-suicide, but we are still dealing with an active investigation. Uh, Anyone with information is urged to contact the Milwaukee Police Department or to remain anonymous, contact Crime Stoppers. 14.5 million Americans have signed up for health care on federal and state exchanges since November 1st. The White House says that is a record high. Open enrollment ended January 15th in 33 states using the federal exchange healthcare.gov. 10 million people signed up on that website. President Joe Biden praised the record-breaking numbers, saying the American Rescue Plan lowered cost and expanded access to health care for more Americans. Right now, Russia continues its military buildup along the borders of Ukraine. The U.S. and NATO are preparing for a possible invasion. Russia has nearly 100,000 troops on Ukraine's borders. President Vladimir Putin is demanding NATO forces be rolled back and Ukraine be banned from joining NATO. Yesterday, a written response was hand-delivered by the U.S. ambassador to Moscow. The U.S. and NATO have made it clear they'll not agree to those demands. Should Russia choose to weaponize its natural gas, by cutting supply to Europe even more than it's already done. We're in discussions with governments and major producers around the world about surging their capacity. The U.S. says the ball is now in Russia's court, but a Kremlin spokesman said Russia's concerns have not been addressed. He also said the current situation is reminiscent of the Cold War. Well, today is Holocaust Memorial Day, marking 77 years after Soviet forces liberated Auschwitz, the largest Nazi death camp. Tina Krauss shares the experiences of some survivors. Well, that's my mother, brother. Alina Peretti says now is the time to finally share her memories of the Holocaust with her family. There is no one day that I don't think about it. She was just a child when she was put on a train to Auschwitz. You had people lying down dead, and you have us standing up waiting when they're going to turn gun in our direction. You know, on you this Holocaust I mean. Memorial Day, yeah. Eric Hirsch like told the BBC about out. his experience yes, at the I, death camp. I lost my parents, I lost my brothers and sisters. The 93-year-old showed the tattoo oh Nazis gave him. If you have chosen to live, you got a number on your arm. And I got B7608. At services across Europe to mark 77 years since liberation, many were reduced to tears. We have to make sure that we never forget. We owe this to six million Jewish men, women, and children murdered in the Holocaust. Faces of survivors, including Eric Hirsch, are part of a memorial exhibit commissioned by Britain's Prince Charles. What better way of rejecting that kind of philosophy that led to the Holocaust and honoring survivors than this project? Each painting is more than a person, it's a story. The Prince hopes will inspire future generations to choose love over hate. Tina Krause, CBS News, London. And Holocaust Memorial Day also remembers people killed in genocides that followed in Cambodia, Rwanda, Bosnia, and Darfur. There's more to come on News 3 Now at noon. The U.S. economy fired up in the fourth quarter and serving up a menu mashup at Mickey D's. I'm Diane King Hall at the CBS Broadcast Center. Of those stories and more in your CBS Money Watch report. Furniture and Appliance Mart's multi-million dollar clearance event is on now. Save up to half off appliance clearance items while they last. Plus, no interest financing for 12 months on all appliances with no minimum purchase. At Furniture and Appliance Mart inside Ashley Home Store off the Beltline.
When you're remodeling your plumbing, turn to RHD. We're family owned and committed to getting the job done right the first time. Reducing the spread of germs is very important, especially now. It's time to think about automatic and touchless plumbing. These new faucets give you a sleek, modern look while keeping you healthy and conserving water. Hand-waving sensors reduce germs, and your virtual voice assistant can help you determine the water temperature and how much to use. Reliable, honest, dedicated. RHD Plumbing, a proud partner of the Green Bay Packers. At Affordable Dentures and Implants, that moment when we see a patient smile is everything to us. So whether it's a single tooth, full dentures, or dental implants, we're here to help you. Go ahead and smile. Go ahead and smile. suffer from erectile dysfunction? Peak Performance for Men uses an advanced form of acoustic wave therapy, restoring normal and natural functionality where it counts most. Call now and receive an ultrasound. Your initial consultation, all for free. Call Peak Performance for Men today. If you stutter on the phone, speech to speech is for you. Hi, Nihada. This is Andy Smith, and I was calling to see if our Home loan has been approved? A specially trained operator revoices a conversation to the person on the other end of the line. Hi, Nahada. This is Andy Smith, and I was calling to see if our home loan has been approved. Oh, Andy, we have great news. You've been approved for the full amount. To learn more about speech-to-speech -speech relay service, go to wisconsinrelay.com. Your senator is working with Donald Trump to take away your right to vote. That's exactly what Ron Johnson is doing. It's why we must pass the Freedom to Vote Act. With the Bucks, Alex Lazary took a stand. Alex Lazary has used his power to expand voting rights. I'll be a senator about action, not talk. We need to protect voting rights. What makes him tick is his love and respect for people. Equity and justice make us stronger. Alex gets it done. I'm Alex Lazary, and I approve this message. It's here, Wisconsin. Ashley Home Store's mega clearance event is on now. Millions of dollars worth of in-stock clearance. Floor sample and special purchase furniture and mattresses must be sold. This is your chance to save as much as 85% off while it lasts. Plus, no interest financing for three years store-wide. Only at Ashley Home Store. You're watching News 3 Now at Noon. Winner of the National Edward R. Murrow Award for overall excellence in television. The U.S. economy accelerated in the fourth quarter. According to the Commerce Department, GDP, which is the sum of all goods and services, rose 6.9% by the end of last year. That was better than expected, even as a rise in COVID infections weighed on various industries. Fewer Americans signed up for unemployment benefits last week. According to the Labor Department, first-time filings for weekly jobless claims fell by 30,000 to 260,000. That was slightly better than expected. Moderna is ramping up its efforts to fight the Omicron variant of the coronavirus. The vaccine maker says it has kicked off a trial to study the efficacy of a booster tailored specifically to that strain. Moderna plans to enroll several hundred adults in its trial, including people who received its initial two-dose regimen and participants who received the two-dose regimen and the booster shot already out. And call it an attack of the McHacks. McDonald's is rolling out four items made popular by fans. The Surf and Turf pairs a double cheeseburger with a filet of fish, while the crunchy double cheeseburger has six chicken nuggets. The hash brown McMuffin is a bit more self-explanatory, but the land, air, and sea, that one combines a Big Mac, chicken sandwich, and filet of fish in one bun. And that's your CBS Money Watch report. For more, head to cbsmoneywatch.com. At the CBS Broadcast Center, I'm Diane King-Hall. Diane, thank you. A mixed day on Wall Street at the noon hour. The Dow Industrial is up 181. The NASDAQ down 40, but the S&P 500 up 19. Up next at noon, Pam Yankee from the Midwest Farm Report joins us for your latest ag numbers and news. Plus, it's been warmer in the past couple of days, but are these temperatures here to stay? Dana will have your full forecast when we come back. Oh my gosh. Wow. Who am I? Wow, is that really me? <laughs> 
Hi, I'm Annette and I'm an actress. Under eye bags and wrinkles are so frustrating. They're so hard to hide and so hard to get rid of. I came across Plexiderm and I was so excited. We have a model, his name is Richie, and all he's doing is taking a small amount. It's so powerful, that's all it takes. This new year, in just 10 minutes, you'll look incredible. This is something that you can do in the convenience of your own home. It's a cream, it's a topical, it literally creates an invisible layer that tightens the skin and smooths it out. All you do is gently rub it underneath your eyes, on your fine lines and wrinkles, and it visibly disappears in as little as 10 minutes. My real true opinion is holy words I can't say on camera. <laughs> this is absolutely unbelievable. I mean, I could feel it just lifting my skin. It was amazing. It feels good. It feels great. Looks even better. I can't even believe that this worked. I was a little skeptical. I am not going to lie because I saw people online with it. I'm like, yeah, right. That can't possibly work. I'm telling you, it really works. I thought I might see a little difference, but to see that big of a difference and, you know, I felt something happening, but I had no idea. Like, I have so many dark circles. I have the puffiness. I have the lines. Like, it's amazing. I love it. <laughs> I did this to my father at home because I was skeptical. Yes, I admit it. Four minutes, 34 seconds. The appearance of his under eye bag was completely gone. We were screaming. You have an event. You have any of those moments where you want to feel the best about yourself. I am telling you, the videos that you see on social media and TV are real. This new year is the best time to get Plexiderm for only $14.95 and see it work for yourself after your first application. Your solution is at PlexidermTrial.com or call the number on your screen. Food delivery robots have taken off on UW campus. The reaction's been great. Mark King finds out how these quirky delivery pods work and why the campus community thinks they're out of this world. Tonight on News 3 Now at 6. Ever tried tapas? Josh Breider's next restaurant week visit takes him to a popular local bistro where small plates and shareables are the specialty. And temperatures are looking a little bit warmer, plus a chance of flurries. That's tomorrow morning from 4.30 to 7. The Farm Report is sponsored by Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Let's check in now with Pam Yonke from the Midwest Farm Report. I'll tell you, 30 degrees feels great. Man. Fantastic. I could breathe this morning. It was wonderful. So, yeah, you know, despite all that hard weather that we lived with yesterday, still a good turnout at Ag Day at the Capitol. That started at Monona Terrace Convention Center yesterday. A couple hundred farmers that then made their way on up to the state capitol to visit with their elected officials. The theme on a lot of the conversations was all about um, biogas, carbon crediting, and what the average farmer in Wisconsin, be it small, medium, or large, might be able to do in the future to monetize those kinds of environmental credits. I know I visited with State Representative Gary Token from Northeast Wisconsin. He's been working on it, along with many other dairy groups and uh, farm organizations, to see if we can build a system that will actually reward farmers for a lot of the practices they've already got in place. I also uh, had a chance to visit recently with a big, uh, I guess you'd call it a biodigester. They're up in Greenleaf, Northeast Wisconsin. They've got 11 different uh, farms that are going to be contributing some of the manure and byproducts from their farm, and they're turning it into products they can monetize, like I said, biogas and the others. So that was kind of really a, uh, the theme of conversations yesterday at Ag Day at the Capitol. Wisconsin Ag Secretary Randy Romanski said, hey, these conversations between farmers and their elected officials are really important. Not only does it give the elected officials uh, clear-cut, easy-to-understand information, it also builds a base and a rapport for future policy development. When those people at the state capitol have to get an answer about something agriculture-related, now they've got a person that they've actually met that they can turn to for some information and guidance from the country. So a good event for sure. Today, better as far as dairy was concerned. I asked uh, Matt Trannell, who was with Everay, got a Platteville this morning, what in the world was going on with the 21 cent drop in tea, or in butter yesterday. Uh, he said basically a lot of the accelerated buying that we've witnessed over the past couple of weeks is about Easter. Some of the major food processors are trying to buy supplies that they will use going towards Easter. And I suppose, Mark, when you think about it, the transportation issues we've been having, today the block and butter prices are unchanged. Double-A butter actually went up a penny and a half, 167 and three quarters. Here I thought all we had to do was recognize the Lunar New Year, which begins, I think, February 1st for China. Mm -hmm. No, now they're buying for Easter. <laughs> Plan ahead. That's why I'm in this job and not trading. <laughs> 
<laughs> I hear you. All right, Ben. Thank you. See you later. Here's Dana Fulton now with the full forecast. Enjoy today, I guess. Yes, yes. It is a warm up, but it is a very brief warm up for us today. As we look across the state right now, some light snow to the north, north of the Dells even. We had sunshine this morning, but a little bit of cloud coverage building in for us, and that's leading to a small chance for some of this light flurry action to the north to drift a little further southeast and, and pass overhead through the next few hours. Temperature wise, we're currently in the low 30s. Now we're just going to drop down into the upper 20s through the evening. Here's that small chance for some light flurries during the evening commute. I think most of the area is going to stay dry, but we could see a few snowflakes swirling around for some folks through that evening drive home. Overnight, our breeze shifts directions again coming in from the northwest, so that pulls our temperatures down below zero. So it was a very brief warm up today. We're back to a very cold spot to start off Friday morning. Wind chills will be well below zero as well early in the day on Friday afternoon. High temperatures in the low teens. We'll have sunshine in the afternoon on Friday. Won't be as breezy. Uh, it'll be cold outside Friday afternoon, but uh, not as cold as what we're expecting for Friday morning. And then again for Saturday morning, if you haven't had enough of the below zero temperatures, Saturday morning we drop below zero yet again. Afternoon highs on Saturday will climb up a little bit higher to the upper teens. So wind chills for this afternoon. Right now, again, we're in the low 30 wind chills uh, in the mid 20s. We're expecting these wind chills to drop down into the teens around the evening commute overnight wind chills though and the 10 to 20 below zero range for us early Friday morning. So it is going to be cold outside for us. High temperatures expected tomorrow to be in the low teens and then as we look ahead in our 6 to 10 day and our 8 to 14 day outlook a little bit of a surge up in our precipitation chances and that's thanks to a system that will be driving in for the start of February. We're going to get through the next few days sitting with sunshine and some some drier weather before conditions get a little messier outside for the start of February. Today, high temps in the low 30s. Now we're dropping through the 20s. For Friday, temperatures will be in the teens for afternoon highs. Saturday and Sunday in the 20s, so we're slowly warming up heading into the start of next week. And next week's going to come along uh, with a little bit of a mess for us for the start of February. This system Right now it looks like mostly snow, but because Tuesday's temperatures are really trending up close to 40 degrees for afternoon highs, we could see some rain mixing in with that snow, likely going to see some rain, especially south of Dane County uh, for Tuesday afternoon, and that's going to make things, of course, quite messy outside for the Tuesday evening commute. After that, it cools down, so we're back to just snow chances for Wednesday and for Thursday, but it's a system that we'll be keeping a very close eye on due to that precipitation trend uh, with the temperatures getting a little dicey outside for us on Tuesday. Tuesday. Before we get to that, dry weather and colder temps settling back in. Guys, Mark asked for it. He was wondering where the cold went. He was so <laughs> grumpy that today was comfortable outside. And I said, don't worry, Mark. We'll get it cold again just okay, for you. Blame me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dana. Uh -huh. There's more to come on News Street Now at Noon. I'm next. You might have to be of legal age to prepare what Howard's working on in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. If you love the Beverly Hillbillies, then you're going to love what we're whipping up today. It's one of Granny's favorites. News 3 Now First Born Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Are you ready to make junk disappear? I am so looking forward to this. We make junk disappear. All you have to do is point. Any first item removed, just $89. I like my smile. I like my smile after finishing the power swabs. I think white teeth are absolute sexy magnets. I love it. The power swabs have really made a huge difference on the entire quality and color of my teeth, and I'm very, very happy with them. <laughs> I've used strips and trays, and they both gave me really sensitive teeth for hot drinks, ice cream, anything hot or cold. Really, really sensitive teeth. With the power swabs, I've been using them for a week and nothing. I had hot coffee this morning and ice cream last night and no problems. <laughs> it is so fast. It is effective. The great thing about power swabs is that it's just easy to use. To me, it's the best solution for teeth whitening on the market. 
Introducing Power Swabs, the five minute stain removing and whitening treatment. Apply the step one stain removing cleanser. Use the swab to get in between teeth, around edges, as the blue cleansing detergent is thin enough to get into pores to release stains. Open swab two. Duplicate the process. Instantly see up to a full two shade difference. That's powerful. Forget gooey trays. Save a fortune on electronics. Forget slippery strips. Imagine your teeth up to six shades whiter in a week. Call or visit us online now and we'll send you the complete power swab system. Seven cleansing swabs. Seven power swab foaming whitening swabs. Thanks for celebrating hundreds of thousands of satisfied smiles. We're offering them to you right now for this incredible discount. We'll pay your shipping and handling. If you're not fully satisfied, even after day one, return it for your money back. Laugh more, smile more, enjoy life more. Call right now or go online now and we've been authorized for a limited time to include our on-the-go Power Swab Stain Out Quick Stick. It's a $19.95 value, free. With this complete offer, you are saving over 40%. Call or go online now. Brighten your smile and your life now. Are you ready to make junk disappear? I am so looking forward to this. We make junk disappear. All you have to do is point. <gasps> Any first item removed? Just $89. We're having a blast here in the Test Kitchen with our week-long tribute to retro TV shows. And today, we're highlighting one of my personal favorites, the Beverly Hillbillies. I always loved how Granny could cook up just about anything that Jed, Jethro, or Ellie Mae brought to her. With so many interesting things being cooked up in the Clampett Kitchen, it's no wonder the show inspired its own cookbook. Now, even though the recipe I'm going to share with you today is inspired by the show, don't you get nervous. There's no vittles, varmints, or smoked crawdaddies in this recipe. I'll give you a hint, though. Granny was often caught sipping it when no one was looking. If you guess moonshine, you're right. And once you taste Granny's moonshine pie, you'll know what all the hubbub is about. It's basically a simple custard-style pie made with a splash of whiskey and served with a dollop of fresh whipped cream that we're sure Granny would have added an extra splash of moonshine to. The easy recipe for Granny's moonshine pie is on our website and is one you'll love whether you live in Beverly Hills or off the beaten path. I'm Howard with Kelly in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen where today we found Granny's favorite way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. Mm. All right, Howard, it's time to introduce you to our pet of the week, Rachel the Rabbit. Rachel is an adult rabbit who was transferred to the Dane County Humane Society from an overcrowded shelter. She's sweet and curious and enjoys treats and veggies. Rachel also likes head massages, but only after she's established a comfort level with her humans. She can't wait to find a new home to hop around in. Dane County Humane Society is celebrating their centennial at Toto's Gala on Friday, March 11th. You can help them celebrate in person at Monona Terrace or virtually from the comforts of your own home. The night will include puppy greeters, animal stories, cocktails, dinner, and dancing. You'll be helping thousands of animals discover that there's no place like home. Make your reservation today at giveshelter.org slash Toto. And last week's pet, Nala the dog, has been adopted. We like that news. If you're interested in adopting Rachel or checking out all the other animals at the Dane County Humane Society, go to giveshelter.org. A 99-year-old South Dakota woman is hitting the slopes for the first time. Edith Warren's family says she has always wanted to go skiing, but has never been able to. Edith has macular degeneration and eye disorder. Now her dream is coming true thanks to Ski for Light. The nonprofit organization consists of volunteers who help assist people ski who can't go down the slopes on their own. Well, we bring uh, volunteers in to help us get uh, assisted skiers down the hill. So visually impaired, uh, paraplegics, um, and just people that don't have the capability of skiing on their own. So that's, that's what that's Ski what we're for Light has for. been helping people ski for over 40 years. Here's Dana, final check of the forecast. Not a lot of snow around here to ski on. Yeah, we, we've got uh, a little bit of a snowpack, and right now we're seeing some snow melting away. Temperatures close to freezing. We'll stay cold for Friday with rain building in for next week. Thank you. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you back here at 4 o'clock. In the meantime, have a great afternoon.